What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from the quarantine zone again. And this time we got Harakiri from the sky. We are here with MS and JJ. Thank you so much for your time today. It's great to have you here. Hey, man. Glad to be able to talk to you in these lonely times. I know. It's... We're in a fucking lockdown as well, you know? It's, I think it's even tougher here than in the U.S. Because, yeah. like, everything is closed down here. We had to do like a COVID test so we can even sit here together because actually we have a curfew and a hard lockdown. So it's, we, especially for you, we, we joined together today. Yeah, and I have to tell you that I was really looking forward to your tour last year at St. Vitus with Numenorian. I was like, that is such a great lineup. Yeah. I was looking forward to that show so much. So, you know, but it's great to be able to talk to you now, uh, you know, because I was definitely going to reach out to interview you at that show. Yeah, man. I hope we can we can still do the show like next year or whatever. But yeah, it was a big fucking bummer that we were not able to play this tour. Uh, yeah. You know, tough times. It'll be worth the wait. It'll be worth the wait. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. But with the new album, Mare, the first question I was curious is, is this like just a continuation from what we heard off of Arson? Or do you think that Mare is almost kind of like its own entity in the How to Kitty for the Sky catalog? It's tough to say, you know, it's, it's, I think we always have like this chapter of two years where we work on an album where we process everything that's happened in this kind of time. And then, you know, we, we try to kind of close with that and then go on. But I don't know, maybe you want to say something about that. Um, I think that, uh, that uh, the most obvious uh, dif difference between um, Arsene and, and Mare to me is um, that I that I think um, Arsene uh, was 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 way way more um, aggressive than uh, Mare is, and Mare is more melancholic and depressive, more like like maybe trauma wars or something. Um, as as from the lyrics uh, and 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 from from the music itself, so to me it's 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 a new chapter, of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, like you know, as, as a huge fan who was like again super excited to see you, like you know when you compare the 2012 self-titled album to an album such as uh, Three Trauma to Arson to Mare, it almost seems like every album. It, do you consider like almost every album to be like a representation of who? you guys were at a particular time is that how you look at them like self portraits as a well? definitely definitely yeah. yeah i mean that's that's maybe the slight differences you know we 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 don't try to change the way we write musical lyrics we try to do it like as direct as possible yeah. you know like straight from the heart but of course you know we, we change too like i mean and with with trauma we were like four or five years younger than now and of course things uh, appear different to us back then so we always try to like, give like a representation of what's going on in our lives right now lyric wise and music wise yeah. so th i don't know if you can call it like maturing or not but it, it is always like a, a snapshot of, of yeah. the, the time where we wrote our moment Every album has its zeitgeist i think it's something you can also translate to english like this like we're like kindergarten or something yeah, yeah. Zeitgeist. zeitgeist yeah. i think it's yeah and i think you can you can see you can see and hear uh, i don't know october 2018 we were that kind of person and this is something you yeah you mature like you you, you said before um yeah, you know, we we all have our like uh, recent worries and troubles yeah. and everything, and of course we we don't write about problems that we had I don't know five years ago, but instead recent stuff. But that's you know it's a, a natural process for us. It's, mm -hmm. So it, it the, always uh, represents something that is like from 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 our like close close uh, time yeah. like the last and sometimes when years. i hear old songs i can even smell uh the, the same stuff i smelled five years before or i can imagine myself uh sitting in the in the flat i lived back then and stuff and i think this is this is what what it's about and this is also what it's what what the the, the word and the, the meaning of zeitgeist is about and i think this is very important when you um writing music and yeah 
Mm-hmm. Well, do you feel that uh, with the first singles that you released off of Mayor, uh, Paul Bearer and uh, Sing for the Damage We've Done, do you almost think that that's a good representation of what we could be expecting for the rest of the album? Because I've always thought that their music is is fairly experimental. Like, I remember listening to Arson and to go from a song like Fire Walk With Me to a song like uh, uh, Heroin Waltz to Stillborn, it almost seems like there was a lot of different emotions and sounds and vibes as well. Well, you know, I don't think that if you heard like two or three singles that you know what the yeah. whole album is about, because you it's know, way more we, diverse. Yeah, we we try to keep some diversity in there, so we have like, you know, we always have these like very long songs, but still, you know, some go more in this like atmospheric style, and some just blast on. So, I think there are there are songs that still will be a surprise if you only know the three singles. Mm-hmm. When, yeah, it comes, definitely. Yeah. when it comes to entering a new album is there like a lot of improv improv involved or experimentation or do you sometimes have like a clear vision of what you want to create when you start something new yeah you know it, it's it's tough to say because sometimes you have something in your head and as soon as you write it down or record it it doesn't work out like the way you imagined it and sometimes then it starts to evolve in the process. Like you have a riff, you have like the whole thing already structured in your hand, but then it doesn't turn out the way you wanted it. So maybe you let it sit for one or two weeks and then you have new ideas for the song. You know, when I write music, it's mostly I have a melody or one riff and then I construct the rest of the song around it. And one song, for example, is written in one or two days. It's just super smooth and another one where I think the additional ideas are not good enough. So I let it sit and let it rest for like two, three weeks and then continue writing it. And uh, as far as I know with him, he always like writes down ideas and uh, yeah, certain yeah. emotions. And then out of that, you create whole lyrics. And, you know, it's, yeah, it's... sometimes you collect uh, something um, for for months or weeks like he like he said and um the same is with the lyrics sometimes i have um one main idea which which leads me to the whole uh rest of the of the, of the lyrics and the concept and sometimes i maybe have just one phrase and it takes maybe sometimes years it doesn't even mean when i have a good idea that will uh, uh fit uh, uh, fits on the next album maybe it's maybe it takes me two or three years and maybe it's the, the, the album um, afterwards uh, when I really um, can 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 um, work this 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 uh, stuff out so that it's one um, one 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 text and one lyric uh, a style that fits together so yeah, you know you can you cannot just you know sit down and say now i have a two hours time frame and now i will write this amount of music it doesn't work yeah. some days you don't have the right inspiration sometimes you just don't feel like it sometimes you know i just take my guitar and then i throw it into the corner because i'm just pissed because i don't have good ideas and another day at 5 a.m i just have something in my head i sit down and write it down and then it just works you know yeah. it's but do you find it maybe like the longer you work on something? Because I, I, I think that's really uh, actually very impressive because it is a form of discipline, I feel. But do you feel like the longer you work on something, the harder it is to kind of like capture an, a moment or maintain that emotional spark or even the inspiration? Yeah, definitely. If you overdo it, then sometimes, you know, the initial spirit gets lost. So you should never do that. But, you know, if, if you have like a, a good idea and then you build up, on that it doesn't need to be like in the exact same day or hour but if you just you know keep working then and try to make it better and you force it then sometimes it just turns to shit so you you should always go with with the initial feeling in my opinion yeah but to me um in the last years i definitely often uh way more often had to rewrite things but maybe just small uh small changes not like um, through uh, whole phrases out or something, but can uh, change them today or something, and and that 
goes like five times or something. I definitely uh, definitely um, rewrite uh, lyrics way more often than I did in the, the first two albums or something. Mm -hmm. Is there a time where maybe lyrics or a concept even could influence the music itself in a way? <laughs> you know, usually I write the music before. I do the pre-production, yeah. send it to him, and uh, he writes the lyrics or at least, you know, fits the lyrics to the music parts and that's actually a process that we do together then because you know i i he i i send him songs and then you know just how he feels he puts the lyrics to the fitting song and then in the end when the lyrics are finished we sit together and uh, we discuss where which part fits or if this the lyrics yeah. fit this particular song and, and we definitely learn from each other so um today it takes us way less time until everything is, is put together the way uh, it works for both of us than it did in the beginning because um, after so many years playing in the same band together yeah you know uh, when when matthias uh, wants uh, me to sing or when he doesn't want me to sing and this is also uh, some kind of very interesting process with, with goals kind of naturally now after all these years together, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can only agree on that. As the core songwriters for the band, and like, do you almost kind of need to be in the same state of mind or almost feel the same way to kind of make the song sound consistent? Or maybe does it help the music at all if you guys are feeling different emotions at the same time? You know, we, we are friends since like 12 or 13 years by now. so. When he has just fragments of some lyrics, I know exactly about, even though there are metaphors in it, I know exactly what it's about, you know, about because he writes very personal stuff and he knows what music I like, how I write the songs. And, you know, it's like a, a nonverbal understanding how we create it, even though it's not simultaneously, it still yeah. works out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So it's fair to say that the music is open to interpretation, right? It's not like you try to maybe engage the listener into your point of view or like seeing things in a similar matter of view, right? No, I, I, that's that's exactly the thing because, you know, I'm not good with words. I try to translate everything into melodies. So the stuff that I feel, I try to express with the melodies, with the music that I write. And he adds like uh, his different impressions and emotions with the lyrics, and and so sometimes um, songs are maybe uh, just accidents or something. They they happen and they. This is like like the same we said, we talked before, like with the zeitgeist. Yeah, sometimes but it, you know, it just fits, happens, it fits but them. it fits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that that's a really good way of putting it. It sounds like it's a very, very organic process, but you also have enough discipline to the point where you don't let the songs get out of control. Yeah, it's it, there's no necessity for it, I think, because we, we, we never, we actually never had the situation where we said, no, this song is complete bullshit or those lyrics are complete no. bullshit. It, it all adds up in the end. You know? We, we just had it like one or two times, I think, when we were discussing about uh, my lyrics and, and the, the song that we both came together and said, okay, the lyrics are cool, the song is cool, but maybe the lyrics would be better for another song. Yeah. But this is the only thing that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like our two so elements, can, bringing it together, that's, that's, that's something we... You know, we we discussed, you know, but in the end, it always worked out perfectly without anyone like uh, having to take. Yeah, uh, and we just have some 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 small problems like um, he is the, he is way better in speaking English, <laughs> and he tells me about uh, my pro pronunciation or um, maybe this word which means the same uh, would fit better and then stuff like this. But this are uh, the main things we are discussing. Yeah, you know, right? you know it's always a bit complicated if you write music that's not like uh, your native language. And but the key is to still, you know, bring Find that emotions, you know, the same yeah. without getting lost in translation. Then, but I think 
in my opinion, I think that works pretty well, and he does a great job of the lyrics. So. And the good thing is, I'm way better in writing than in speaking. So, <laughs> so. everybody has their own uh, fortes. Well, one thing I was all, another thing that I'm very very interested about you guys is I, I not only do I like the music, but I love the presentation of you know I love the artwork. I feel like you make the album artwork very much count. I do like your photo shoots and kind of going by the names MS and JJ. Like, do you almost feel like that maybe like in the album and even when you perform live that you almost maybe portray a character or maybe portray somebody outside of who you personally are in a way i try to do i try to be myself uh it doesn't, doesn't matter Same. if on stage or apart from stage uh try my jj is like like the short version of timber Jones, uh, timber Jones, which uh is the, the nickname my friends call me um, but yeah, I try to be as authentic as as as, as I can be, and um, I've never really really understood why you have to make so much uh, um, theater on stage with uh, special outfits and, and all that. I'm from that from that kind of view. Um, yeah, understanding was just this down to earth. Down to earth. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, try that's, to be. Th that's exactly the thing, you know, we, we don't create like a stage persona or anything uh, with some like a super evil fucking nickname or whatever, because it would be like counterproductive when we try to make personal music, when we use this as therapy yeah. for all the personal stuff, why all of a sudden we would create like another like persona on stage that, that doesn't make sense no. I, I could not agree with you more i never understood that and like you know i i grew up with artists like marilyn manson and rob zombie and all that but, and and their music is yeah, always there's nothing wrong with that it just doesn't uh, fit from, to from, our from, music from me you know? too i also understand black metal bands are very corpse paint and all that stuff but uh, for us it's not necessary so yeah which I think is great. I feel like you're. If people want to get to know who you personally are, they have all they have to do is listen to the music. I think that that's a great yeah, representation. Also. It's not like it's an escape from yourself, or you're addressing a concept that you're distant from. Yeah, that that would be completely counterproductive to what we try to do because you know it's it's kind of therapy for us, you know, to Catastrophe. write stuff from our soul, you know. Mm -hmm. Do, do you do you find it? I have two more questions for you. Uh, in songwriting, do you find it easier to maybe come up with ideas when both of you are maybe like alone and kind of separated from each other, or does inspire or do you like to be in the company of each other when it gets into songwriting mode? No, no we're we always alone. Separate. Really? Like, we never wrote stuff together. Yeah. Never. So I'm you witnessing a rare music. sight right now. lyrics. <laughs> But I think that's that's yeah that's, that's one of the, of the things that is important because it's our own personal catharsis uh, for him uh, writing the music and to me writing the lyrics. I always saw myself uh, way more as a poet um, than a songwriter or something. So I think um, this combination of, of us two uh, makes yeah completely sense. Hmm. And I'd imagine inspiration sometimes comes out of the blue too. So like it strikes when you least expect sure. it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You, you cannot just schedule. You now we sit together and we do some songwriting session. As I mentioned before, it would never work for us. Yeah. You know, we 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 spend a lot of time together as a like outside the band and you know talk about personal stuff. But that's not when we write. Yeah. Some music not our creative process. We might. We might be influenced by the stuff we talk about and everything, but we do it yeah. completely separated. In the writing, I pretty much uh, write write on write on trains and stuff. You can't write music <laughs> on on trains uh, while traveling or something. But that's that's something I really really appreciate on on writing lyrics. That it's yeah. Yeah, you, you you could you could write the lyrics quietly in a notebook. You don't need to. Whereas for guitar players, they're humming their riffs on the on public transportation. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing <laughs> I think about while writing lyrics. How is the harmony of the guitar or something? I just write it, and so yeah. But in the end, it fits. I can't tell you how many times I've been on the subway in New York City where people are like humming riff ideas over the phone and stuff like that. I would yeah. say, yeah, it must be very different in New York. You know, in Vienna, you know, we are known to be very grumpy people, the Austrians. <laughs> if you only, like, <clears throat> do this, like, everyone looks at it. 
they want to kill you. Yeah, it's it's a very quiet atmosphere usually. But, but that's something I, that's, <laughs> that's something I find uh, pretty pretty uh, pretty uh, strange because I uh, also do that sometimes. To when I have something like a riff idea, then I stand in in one one corner of, of the subway or the, or the train, and, and you feel like oh man, <laughs> everybody is looking at you and, and and laughing inside. But yeah, when you have the idea, it's it's, it's it would be a shame to to get, that that idea gets lost because you are just too because a, you care too, too much about what people think to, uh, train, yeah. sing uh, <laughs> yeah in front of other people. <laughs> hey, better better why not? Better better to lose some friends uh, for being artistic than to lose artistic ideas for keeping friends. Yeah, not even oh, better make some strangers, strangers yeah, angry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And uh, the final question I wanted to ask you is, is actually about the Austrian metal scene. I actually interviewed uh, Eden Bridge last week, who, who's from Austria, and like it seems like. Uh, uh, the thing is, we are both no scene guys, so yeah. we, we actually doesn't really know about a we, scene. We don't or... go to metal bars or anything like that. Oh really? It's... There, so there no, is... no, really. So there's no like think... music scene in Austria that you could elaborate. Oh, there is a music scene, but sure you know... there is. But, but you know, we never you, cared about. You meet people at, at at shows or so, but you know the the all the surroundings. You know, like going to metal parties where drunk people just listen to fucking Man of War or something like that. You know, it's it's just <laughs> exhausting. <laughs> so that's that's. I prefer you know going somewhere quiet where you can enjoy a drink and actually talk to your friends than going to a fucking noisy metal, metal bar. War. Yeah. It's just maybe, maybe I'm getting old, but it's not my thing. No, we, we we also didn't do this when we were twenty or something. You know, we twenty, we just didn't care. At some yeah, point we just didn't care. We, we just yeah, were there yeah. to drink, but not to listen to men of war or something, or to meet other men. Anyhow, guys. the scene. If we if we talk about the scene, like regarding to music, to bands that are like upcoming from Austria, I think we we have a lot of talented young bands. Like, don't know about Eden Bridge because that's not exactly my kind of music mm -hmm. but uh especially like in, in like indie rock stone rock yeah, uh, black yeah, metal yeah, there are many yeah, yeah, very yeah, talented yeah. bands that deserve way more attention like elenda for example yeah uh, the thing is um austria is, is is very small and stuff but i think when it comes to post black metal um as as, as we as we do um, there are a lot of a lot of good bands, not just because they are our friends, because the the bands are really good, and we also we yeah we have we have a little bit of everything I'd say. We have a few cool stoner psychedelic rock bands. We have uh, we have uh, very cool indie rock bands, but that's the thing. We we, we never cared about a scene or something. I, I, I never did. I don't, I don't know if. Maybe How you it were, was when you were twenty or something, but maybe you I were think in you a metal both bar. Were, were never that scene guys or something like maybe, this. Maybe you were in a metal bar and you just don't remember it. That's how good the show was, or something like that. <laughs> well, I think this is I think this is kind of separated in, in Austria. There is a bar or there is a, uh, um, a club where you go to the concert. No, there there are, there are also like uh, like small stages where the bar is above. But and of course, so if the many. concert was so great that you were feeling good and were having some beers, then of course you stay a bit longer then. But <laughs> just just going to a metal bar to I don't know sing along to some Iron Maiden or so. No, the, the thing is the thing is I do it different when I'm when I'm in, in Vienna or if I'm in Salzburg, because when I'm in Vienna, I just uh, go out to go on a concert and, like he said, maybe stay for two drinks or three drinks after the concert. When I'm in Salzburg, there are no concerts. I just go out to get shit faced and uh, <laughs> don't think about concert that much or something. Yeah. I also go to clubs uh, or, or, or bars without um seeing a concert but that's different in vienna it's a photo for, to me it is like this yeah. i mean <laughs> I've, I've been to salzburg before and i was only a young teenager but i said that this is a great place to to party and may i just say the beer really <laughs> you think <laughs> you that you should, the only you should one. go to vienna man yeah. seriously <laughs> well well i i just want to say that after i went to after i went to salzburg i could never freaking drink a bud light or a budweiser here again i mean the, the beer and well the, like 
Could yes, not either. That's it's right. Like, because <laughs> American beer really sucks. Yeah. Most of. No, you know, I don't. I've never been to the U.S., but I've heard there is a lot of like craft beer stuff that is apparently really good. But the, and in London, for the first time, I drank an American bud, and and that was like a one-time thing, and never again. Holy shit! <laughs> and drinking in America is way too expensive for the shit you get to drink. I don't know. I don't know the East Coast. But I've been twice, um, <laughs> uh, once to the to the, the the Middle West and once once to the West Coast, and it was way too expensive for you get this much of alcohol and the rest is just I don't know, <laughs> tonic water. <laughs> yeah, you have to be 21 to drink, but what you can buy an and assault the, rifle. The beer at, is just for peeing. It's not old, for what? getting shit faced. <laughs> this was the, that was the best. <laughs> That was the best response. I love that. I love. I just loved how brutally honest it was. I love that. That was the best end to any interview ever. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Before <laughs> before we go, and I got to tell you a story quickly when we uh when I hang up. But uh, before we go, is there just uh, anything else uh, with the band you would like to promote in terms of the release of the new album with Mare coming out? Like maybe a live stream performance or new music videos or new merch or anything else you'd like to plug? One. Yeah, we we got merch. We got all, all. I mean, the release is also delayed to February because you know at, at the pressing plant apparently there was like there, there was like a cluster of COVID and now everything delayed. So we had to, yeah, we had to change it from from January 29th to to yeah, February before, from September to January. Yeah, but but in general we just waiting to play live again and to play the US states that we were supposed to play last year so I'm, I'm really fucking hyped to finally go to the US and play there yeah and so we... fingers crossed that, that this pandemic shit goes over well to so get your fucking vaccination yeah so. and and I promise when you come to the US I'll bring I'll bring a nice case of beer I promise I, I won't bring the usual shit Excellent. Yeah. But thank, I you. Take you work, thank you so much. Awesome. Everybody, we are here with Hot Acuity for the Sky. Be sure to check out Mayor coming out February 19th of this year. This is Alex from Heavy New York. We will see you next time.